Here's another exercise. So pretend we have a grade variable that we don't know. If it's from 90 onward, then print A. If it's from 80 to 89, print B. If it's from 70 to 79, then print C. And otherwise, print F. So the way we would do this is to use if statements. So if grade is greater than or equal to 90, then print A. Else, if grade is greater than or equal to 80, then print B. Then else, if grade is greater than or equal to 70, then print C. And otherwise, print F. And in this case, we would print B. Now here we have a lot of nested if else blocks which can make the code harder to read. So in this situation, we can just remove the brackets over here, changing this into an else if, like that, and it would still work the same way. Similarly, I can change this to remove the brackets, and it runs the same way. And since Java is not space sensitive, I can just put the else and if together like this. So now if grade is greater than or equal to 90, it'll print A. Otherwise, if the grade is greater than or equal to 80, it'll print B. And otherwise, if the grade is greater than or equal to 70, it'll print C. And otherwise, it'll print F. So here are a few exercises. You should try doing them before listening to the explanation. So the first one, gr is 93. 93 is greater than or equal to 90. So print a. Then since we executed this if, we skipped the rest of them because they're all attached to the if. So skipped, skipped, skipped. Second one, gr is 86. So skipped because that's not greater than or equal to 90. Then it prints b. Then skipped because we already executed one of them. Then similarly when GR is 77, A and B are skipped, print C, and the else is skipped because we executed the if. Then when GR is 65, the ifs are skipped and we print F. Note that when we have this if, else if, else if, and else structure, or any number of else ifs in between, only one of them can be executed. And the output is shown below, A, B, C, F. Next exercise. So we have G is 93. 93 is greater than or equal to 90, so prints A. 93 is greater than or equal to 80, so prints B. 93 is greater than or equal to 70, so print C, and doesn't print F because we already executed the if. And the difference between these is that there's no else attached to this if, so then we executed this, but we're still able to execute the next if statement because there's no else attached to it. And the next exercise, GR, G2 is 90, 90 is not greater than 90, so that's skipped. 90 is greater than or equal to 80. So then prints B. 92 is greater than or equal to 70. So prints C. Then the else is skipped since we execute the if. So we have B, C for this exercise. For this one, you may think that it's four, five, six only because we have if false, but actually it prints both one, two, three, and four, five, six. And the reason is because we have the semicolon right here, which by the way, is an extremely bad practice to put semicolons after if statements. And the reason is because 
as I said earlier, when we don't have brackets, it treats the next statement as the thing that's wrapped around in brackets. And a semicolon itself is a statement. So then what's happening is if false semicolon. So the semicolon is the thing that's inside the if statement. And this is just a block that's normally executed. So it prints one, two, three, and four, five, six. Next example, exercise. So first, a is 99, then a percent 2 is not equal to 0, so that's skipped. Then a is equal to 99, so then a divide equals 11, so now a is 9. Then we don't care that a is already 9 because we already executed this else if and this else if is part of the chain. So we just skip this else if and else and we directly print nine. As shown below. Next exercise. This one looks very similar, except this time we have if instead of else if over here. So what happens is b is 99, that's skipped. Then b is 99, so b becomes 9. Then this case, we're allowed to execute this if because there's no else in front of it. So then b becomes 14, and then it prints 14 after skipping the else as shown below. And then the next exercise we have here, a1 is seven, seven's not greater than seven, so this is skipped. Then seven is equal to seven, so it prints a. Then afterward, seven is not equal to nine, so it doesn't print b. And notice that this if breaks the chain of if, else, if, else. Then it executes this else because that if wasn't executed. So then a1 becomes 8. a1 becomes 16. If you remember how this type of concatenation worked, we print 165 because 16 is added to the string to get a string 16, and then 5 is added to that string to get 165. And then here we have parentheses, so it's 21. And then in this one, we have that semicolon there again. So then this if is treated separately. So when we print QWERTY, as shown below, A165, 21, QWERTY. And the next exercise, we have I1 is negative 10. Negative 10 percent 5 is 0. And I1 is less than 0. So I1 becomes 3. Then here, notice this if doesn't have an else. So then I1 is 3. So I1 becomes 4. Then the else is skipped. So then I print 4. Then I1 becomes 3. Then 3 is less than 7, so i1 becomes 4. Then i1 is 4, so i1 becomes 8. However, we have this else if here, so I don't care that i1 is 8 but because it's skipped. It's part of the chain. Then i1 is not equal to 2, so then skipped. i1 is equal to 8, so then print 16 then that's skipped. And as shown below, we have 4 and 16.